In our classes, we've been talking about the need for normalizing data and mapping density, as opposed to raw, uh, mapping raw data values by enumeration units such as counties. While mapping or using these raw data values may have some utility or value, where we look at the allocation of resources for something like um, uh, COVID-19, but in most cases, we do want to look at normalized data that'll exhibit a normal distribution curve so that we can run calculations like our z-scores and standard deviations and means and medians without worrying about any other concerns with the data. In these particular cases here, we're using the spatial join and some attribute calculations to normalize raw data by county. You can see I'm looking at um, for at North Carolina counties. I've downloaded the hail data, all hail events between 1955 and 2002. And so you can see what they look like on top of the counties. And I've downloaded these from the um, NOAA's National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center. And you can read all about these and I'll post this information as well. Download the hail, wind, tornadoes, or whatever we want to look at. But if we right mouse click and open the attribute table, you can see I've got a number of these events, 9,440. You can see the magnitude, fatalities, the loss, uh, you know, a, a lot of different information about these here. And, you know, and I, I can sort these and, and whatnot. Now, what I want to do is map these by counties because looking at these 9,000 uh, 9, plus, plus tornadoes doesn't give me a lot of value. I can probably do some density mapping with these, but I want to map these by county. And we're going to utilize the spatial join right here. So I can, I'm going to right mouse click on NC counties. I'm going to go to joins and relates, and I'm going to click on add spatial join. So this add spatial join is going to count the number of hail events by county. Join features. And if I wanted to, under fields, I could calculate some, I can do some calculations with fields. I can go and add up all the injuries at the same time that I'm calculating these or summarizing these by county. I'm going to run these. Now, starting with our ArcGIS 3.0, and what we've talked about in previous tutorials, is that we did not create a brand new feature class that we've seen in previous iterations of ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap. So when I right mouse click, open up the attribute table for my counties, I can see my SF1 data, our POP2000, but I keep going to the right a little bit. I've got my join count, and then I've kind of just left everything else in here. I didn't delete any I didn't, I didn't delete any of the extraneous columns that I didn't need because what I care about here is this join count. And so we can see for Alamance County, there were 89 hail events during this time period. You can see, I guess the earliest was in 1970 or whatever uh, I calculated with. And I can go to symbology, calculate, graduated colors. And now I can Instead of mapping 2010, I can map this join count. So I've not got this join count, and now I've got something that looks like this. Now this is all good and well, but you would imagine I've got some of these larger counties here to the southeastern uh, part of the state that are a little bit larger. So the chances of them having a hail event are probably going to be much higher than smaller counties. So I want to normalize by population. This is fairly simple to do. I can add a new column, and we've talked about adding columns before, but I want to make sure I pick up the appropriate units. So when I open my attribute table once again, it's going to be a function of my square miles, which is stored as SQMI, this column right here, and my join count. Now I can calculate these as per capita, so 89 divided by 434, it's going to be a relatively small number or I could do per capita, multiply them times a thousand, so I can get the number of hail events per thousand square miles. I have a good idea of what a thousand square miles looks like, as opposed to me looking at what 0.04 hailstorms looks like per square mile. 
So I'm going to click on my context menu to the right, the three little dots. I'm going to go to my fields view. And if I really wanted to, and some of the things I've been doing lately is just making everything, unclick on everything that I don't need. I'm just going to add the, the fields that I need. So I'm going to go square miles. Like I said before, I've got my join count here. And just for a second, we're going to look at this here and making sure we have the appropriate field. So this is a little bit easier to manage as well. So I have my pop 2013, my square miles, and my join count. And then while I'm here, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add hail density. Add a field called hail density. And I'm going to make this a double, okay, because I do want to store these with some degree of precision. And you can see the big long name because it's, you know, referencing, uh, referencing another table. And so now I want to calculate these density to be 89 divided by the square mile times the whole thing by 100. And so I want to look, or 1,000. So I want to look at, look at the hail density per 1,000 square miles. So I'm going to calculate field. This is going to be 100, or 1,000 in this case. It could be 100 times join count divided by square miles. Since since this is largely going to be a physical phenomena, we're going to normalize by square miles as opposed to something like cancer deaths or crime, which we normalize by population. Click OK. So for now, every thousand square mile area, Alamance County has had 204 hail events as opposed to Alexander County, which had 223, Allegheny 207. And I can sort these from highest to lowest. So we can see something like New Hanover County, which is down in the southeastern part of the state, even though it was orange before, by far it's probably looks like about 15 to 20% higher than the next highest county for these hail events. And now I can map these. And it's going to look a little bit different. So I'm going to go back to my symbology. So instead of mapping my join count, I'm going to map this hail density. Looks a little bit different. Okay, a lot different. So you can see these areas in the southeastern part of the state have been teased out because one of the reasons why they had so many hail events is probably because they were larger. Me personally, I like working with quantiles. A lot of debates on that. But you can see areas to the north of Greensboro in the mountains and then the western part of the triad are going to be much higher than some of the other areas. You know, you know, northeastern part of the state have very low amount of hail events. And we can look at the geographic relationships with those. And so we turn some really powerful maps that look like this into maps like this, and we talk about the normalization. Now, another application we have of normalization that we've talked about our class before is mapping of cancer deaths. So we have a map of cancer deaths, and this just looks like 100,000 dots right here. And so what I want to do is map these. Now, I've gone through the trouble of running the spatial join on this already, because we're going to talk about some of the other challenges that we run into when we normalize data. And you can see with my join counties, I've got my POP 2013, I've got my square miles that I stored here, and then I've got my count. So these are my cancer deaths. I've got my cancer deaths right here. Now, once again, I can make a new calculation here. Now, with cancer deaths, this is going to be based on population. And if I were to raw map the raw data values, and just look at which county had the most. We have Mecklenburg, Wake, Guilford, Forsyth, Buncombe. That makes sense because these are the most populous counties in the state. So the chance of having a cancer death in this particular county is going to be higher just because of the higher population. I want to calculate the actual rate. So I'm going to do calculate field. 
I'm going to multiply this times 10,000 this time. Because a lot of times we see death rates as per 10,000 or per 100,000 when we look at health-related data. Times count divided by top 2013. And so when I map this here, go to symbology, we're going to run into a couple of problems here because these are basically just cancer death rates. Now, when we actually look at the death rates right here, what do we have here? What do we see? In that northeastern part of the state, western part of the state here, basically what are we mapping? When we look at these maps, essentially what we're mapping where the older populations live. So that kind of makes sense. Okay, it's kind of counterintuitive, and it doesn't really lend anything to us when we map cancer death rates and the older populations have higher death rates. It's kind of self-explanatory. And so we're really not elucidating any, anything new here. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to go check on median age right here. I've got median age right here. And if I wanted to, I could create a new chart. Create a chart, scatter plot, where I look at the relationship between median age and death rate. And you can see a, a positive relationship with an R squared of 0.56 that shows as the median age of a county goes up, the cancer death rate goes up. And so we, we, what we'll have to do here is do something called age grading. That's a little bit more of a convoluted process where basically we will wait by age cohorts. Uh, we, we create death rates for each age cohorts and uh, weight them by the age of people. And in the description, I'll post a really good primer from the North Carolina Department of Health Statistics that talks about how to do this and how we can do this within the confines of a, uh, a GIS. So that's about it for this tutorial. We discussed the need for mapping density. We use the spatial join. We use attribute calculations to, to normalize by both area as well as population for the different type of phenomena we work with because we know that data are going to be skewed by populations or areas or maybe some other attribute that might be misleading. And as we kind of finished up with this tutorial, median age was also skewing the data for each of these counties, which lead us to get into the idea of age grading or um, age grading, which I'll kind of post some links to.